my question is is that I've gotten into a situation where it is um, I basically had a breach of contract with my ex-wife back in 2012 and with um, our custody agreement that we agreed upon. And what she did was um, she then in turn uh, used the public school district, um, which it was Tammy Lopardis was the lady that actually did this. Um, she actually rewrote my custody agreement, um, which me and my wife had agreed upon and all that stuff. And she told me, well, if you don't like it, sue us. And well, who told you to sue them? This uh, director of special education at the school district. Wait, and wait, she's, wait, wait a second. Say that again. You said, wait, I'm trying to follow this. You, you, you and your wife got divorced. Um, well, what happened was is that she, um, th this lady at the school district, she um, told me that she was going to rewrite our custody agreement and because I had my children Monday through Friday, or Sunday through Friday, and she didn't like that. So, okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, let, let, me just, let me go a little slower. You and your wife got divorced, right? Yes. Okay, what do you... 2012. Wow, recently. Okay, see, that helps. Okay, so you got divorced. Where did you get the divorce? Uh, here in Camdenton, Missouri. Okay, Missouri. Is that where you got married? Yes. Is that where the children were born? Uh, yes. Okay, that makes life simple. Okay, so uh, you guys got divorced in 2012. How long were you married for? Uh, seven years. Seven years. Okay, fine. Technically seven years. We were separated for like four years while this divorce process was going on. So technically we were married seven years according to their paper. And these kids are biologically yours? Yes. Okay, no dispute over that? No. Good, lovely. All right. I just needed to have a kind of an idea before you get too deep, man. you got to get some basics covered. All right, okay. go ahead, man. All right, and what happened was the um, my kids have disabilities, and I told the which me and my wife, me and my ex-wife had this parenting plan set out that she had to take them to these doctors and she had to do this and that and and all this stuff and take them to their therapies and everything they needed. Okay, well, what kind of disabilities they got? Well, my son was diagnosed with Asperger's and uh, dyslexia. And uh, let's okay. see, Asperger's, order. Asperger's, you mean he could say shit and fucking get away with it? What's that? Oh, is that Tourette's? I'm thinking Tourette's. What's Asperger's? Asperger's is like a form of autism where uh, he um, he has a sensory processing disorder where he, like, sounds bother him. It, um He's very sensitive in that aspect. He doesn't process stuff the way other people do. Um, and, I mean, it, it's it's a big, big type deal for, for him. Um, and he has, uh, he's supposed to take occupational therapy and um, physical therapy or uh, speech therapy and stuff like that to, you know, in, in which I had it all set up privately for him. And um, which I was paying for this stuff, and you know my ex-wife didn't have to pay for anything. And um, the school wanted the services to happen at at their location, and I told them when I enrolled the, the kids that everything's done private. This is the deal me and my ex-wife worked out. She has to take them here, so on and so forth. So do I, and we don't need anything from you. And the only thing I want you guys to do is just to accommodate the days they miss. That's it. Okay. And so then they said, okay, yeah, that's not a big deal. We can do that. Well, okay. The other kid's disability? What's that? I'm sorry? What's the other kid's disability? One has got Asperger's. And what's the other guy's? Well, my daughter has a um, bladder condition that um, she has uh, a misshaped bladder and stuff. And so... She has to go to a urologist and things like that and is supposed to be on medication to help with her bladder spasms and things like that. And my also, my daughter is also, um, she's 
got, uh, there's been some um, foul play, I'll just put it that way, by my ex-wife and her boyfriend towards my daughter. And oh, no. What do you mean foul play? You mean they, they double dribble when she's not looking? Yeah, yeah. No, and, no, I'm, I'm serious. No, I was talking basketball there for a second. I said they double dribble when, you know, no, no. What, what do you mean foul play? What do you mean by foul? Well, my daughter was with my ex-wife for 18 months in her sole custody. Um, and there was several doctor's reports of vaginal rawness and bleeding and her butt hurt and all this stuff, and it could never be explained what was going on with her, and this happened for 18 months, and um, my ex-wife... It got nothing to do with a bladder condition? No, it had nothing to do with her bladder condition. All right. It just sounded like there might have been a connection, you know, very close proximity. Right, and what and what we're thinking is it may have actually caused her bladder condition, the stuff that was going on to my daughter. Right. And so that's that's the basic history of that. Um, so anyway, I, I had it set up to where all this stuff was taken care of for the kids, and my ex-wife nor I had any choice in the matter. What the doctor said is what went, because my ex-wife would doctor shop and all that stuff. So we had this agreement. And she, um, like I said, then uh, I enrolled the kids in the school, told the school, hey, look, I want nothing from you guys. Everything's taken care of privately. Only thing I'm saying is, you know, I, I need you guys just to say, okay, they can miss Tuesdays or whatever, you know. Yeah. And um, so they were like, okay, yeah, not a big deal. Well, we had a meeting, and this lady, Tammy Lapartis, she, um, she actually said, hey, uh, I don't like what you've done with your kids. It, it seems like you've educationally neglected them and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And I was like, hey, 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 who's this, no, who's this lady? She's just the director of special education at the school district. That's that's all she is to me. She's a director, you said? Yeah, she's the director. How does she get involved? How come a lower, lower, lower minion didn't contact you first? How did this director get in your life? I have no idea. They, um, many people that I've talked to said that they've never met this lady, and they have kids with disabilities in the school. Okay, just just, just, just slow down a second then, man. Okay, so you said all of a sudden, I mean, a director isn't just going to walk into your life one day and say, hey, you know what, I don't like the way you're doing this thing. I mean, who told her, who, who you know, to make the director get off her ass and get involved in your life? Who, right. Who's living? I'm saying who's who's underneath her that would have reported you to the director. Well, and that was it. Is whenever I enrolled the kids, um, about within 15 minutes, an email started shooting from the lady that I talked to whenever I enrolled the kids to okay, the with, director. You, with, you, enrolled, you enrolled the kids where? At the Lebanon School District. Okay, you were enrolled. So you what? Okay, how long were they in that school? before, you know, what, did you just move into this location? Yes, yeah. I okay. just moved here after my divorce. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You, you're skipping a lot of stuff here, man. Okay, okay so, you, so you moved to a new school district called Lebanon. Okay, great. So you moved to Lebanon. I hear it's really nice this time of year, Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a lot better than where you're at. I don't have so much snow. <laughs> oh, 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 well, I, I figure you're in the Middle East. You're in Lebanon, so. Yeah, yeah. Palestine. Absolutely. That's what it seems like sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Palestine here, yeah, Palestine, Lebanon, yeah, okay. But anyway, uh, Vital, I think he's Lebanese, ain't he? Is Vital? Oh, no, that's what's that? No, no, it's just Vital is listening. Vital, Vital, Vittles. Oh. That's what the ex time if he was Lebanese, I say, oh, he's Portuguese, that's right. <laughs> well, well, anyway, so this lady, oh, he's, 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 he wants to Lebanon, and things have got pretty rough in Lebanon. Yeah, I hear about that all the time. But uh, so you moved over to this new county called Lebanon County School District, and how did they even know about you? How, why did they even get involved in your life? Well, they got involved in my life because I just simply, like I said, I asked them for an accommodation plan for the kids because they would miss certain days. Okay, that's great. Okay, now it's starting to make sense. You went to, you okay, you started it. Okay, that's fine. All right. And this lady, Tanya Lapartis, actually, the director of social, or uh, the director of special education, actually sued my aunt several years ago. 
And what did she, I had, what, how, did, how did she know you were related? Uh, because my mom actually testified in her case, and she had the same last name as me. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, and you just me my my mom went to the Supreme Court of Missouri on my case um, whenever I was a kid, and she won because they wouldn't educate me and stuff. It was an educational case. Oh wow! Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's that's how she kind of that's how she knows me, and yeah. I'm, I'm just yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys are infamous and notorious. Okay, that's great. Right. Yeah. And so, which I had no idea that she was at the school district um, because, I, like I said, I, I lived in Camdenton, and I wasn't going to put my kids in Camdenton so, um, because my mom settled the case in 2002 uh, with the Supreme Court and stuff so I against the Camdenton school. So I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to mess with these people. I'm just going to move, and I'm going to put my kids in a different school, and, and everything's going to be grand and wonderful. And um, and then you know that's what that's why I said I made up that plan with my ex-wife that I would take care of everything for the kids, and I had them through the week, so she didn't have to do anything. And um, so whenever I moved to whenever I enrolled them in the school, they sent that email around and said the uh, FYI Lagaris and the director of special education, Tammy Lapata, she says, do they really live in this district? Right, and then okay. sent an email back to her. So that's how she was involved in this. And um, then she tells me in one of these meetings, um, these I, they call them IEP meetings, what is and that? I and and uh, they're independent educational um, meetings is what it is to discuss what the plan is going to be and how they're going to do this stuff. Okay, okay, individual okay plans. Okay, that makes sense. IEP. Right, okay, great. And um, so. Then um, in, in one of these meetings, which I've recorded all of these meetings, and I've recorded every interaction with these people, um, so I have all of this stuff on recording that in one of these meetings, she says, hey, you know, this is what we're going to do. This is your new parenting plan. And I told her, I said, you guys don't have the judicial authority to do this. You, you guys can't do this. Yeah. And they said, we're, we're going to... Um, do it this way. And I and I said, well, you guys can't. And they said, well, we talked to our attorney, and our attorney said we can, so if you don't like it, sue us. Yeah, but and what I'm saying, well, did you well, tell them that, did you, did you tell them, did you, okay, when when they, when they were going on about saying that they could do this and they could do that to you, did you just say to them something simple, like, uh, are, are you talking, like, did you ask them, like, are you talking about my property? I, I mean, did you, did you call, go that route? No, I didn't know about this situation. Uh, you know, I didn't know about you and, and all of this stuff. I was I was ignorant to the fact that, that this kind of stuff, I knew it was wrong, but I didn't, I guess, put it in the right words to say, hey, you guys are doing wrong. Uh, fix it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I'm saying and so, what I'm saying is um, they're not doing something wrong, you know, because as far as they're concerned, it's in their, it's in within their um belief system that what they're doing is proper. So right. you've got to educate these people and what they're doing, you know, isn't wrong, but they don't have the scope of the authority to, to touch your property. They're, they're going to think they're 100% in the right because they went to some sort of, a, you know, community college and they got an associate degree in psychology, child psychology, and they think they're, you know, they got a 4.0 grade average. So for some reason, that believes, they, they, there's that belief just makes them feel that they're justified in anything they do. Right. Because they, the accreditation, they got a piece of paper that says that, like the Wizard of Oz, you got a big brain, you know, you know, Mr. Scarecrow. So now you're smart because I gave you a piece of paper. Right. So yeah, people just got a piece of paper that says they're smarter than you. So if they're going to ask their legal department, yes, and their legal department says the same thing. Well, we got a piece of paper saying that we, you know, are attorneys. We pass the bar, so we are smart. So we can do whatever we want too. So everybody just believes because they got this piece of paper that it makes them better than you, it makes you them so much smarter than you. Then you know what's they know what's best because this piece of paper says that they're smarter than you. Right. No, I I completely understand that, and that's that's so what that's I was at. So what they're doing is what I'm trying to say is they are not doing wrong. They were led to believe the more pieces of paper they have, the smarter they are. 
the more in the, right. in the right they are, the more that they're acting properly and just and fairly and everything else. You, you're never going to convince these people that they're wrong. Right. Right. Okay. No, I, that's I, good. I completely that's understand. Good. That's good that they said sue us because that's what you do is then you say, oh, good, you know, you said sue us, and you recorded all this, right? Yes. So oh, lovely. So it's like I'm going to grant you your wish. Your wish is going to come true. Well, and, and that's what I did, and um, I how actually you, filed I, I filed a administrative uh, hearing thing for them, which, like I said, I didn't know. Isn't, that just, stuff and, yeah, isn't that just lovely? You stepped right into their world. Right. And you're right. And, 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 really right, and, and how many pieces of paper do you have that says that you're super smart? None. Yeah, none. How many pieces of paper do they have? Thousands. So guess who's going to lose this one? You're not here. You're not here. And that's, this isn't even the worst part of it. What happened is after I filed that administrative hearing thing, then they uh, or then the school district and some of the people in in the school district, you know, the women and the men in the school district, they actually involved Division of Family Services in this. Right. And then Division of Family Services, uh, then my ex, after they involved Division of Family Services, my ex-wife charged my son with molesting his sister. And whenever I went into, uh, right like a week before court, she did this to okay. Division of Family Services. Well, how old and I went into Division of Family Services, and I told them, I said, look, Here's 18 months of medical records that this well, stuff how old, happened. How, how, old, how old is little Johnny S? Uh, seven. Oh, please. Okay. Yeah, he's confident. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's that's where <laughs> I went in there. And, and a seven-year-old seven year uh, man is fully functional at that time to do, do some serious molesting, uh-huh. Right, and that's that's whenever I went in because I was, I was pissed that, that my ex-wife did this to our, her own flesh and blood. Yeah, he's, and, probably pack, he's probably packing a good three quarters of an inch. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so I, I went into DFS, the Children's Division there, Social Services, and I told him, I said, look, here's 18 months of medical records that this stuff was going on to my daughter when my son nor I or anybody else was around. It was just the mother and the mother's boyfriend. Yeah. And because, because she left our son with me, um, he, she hurt his leg, and she left him with me and took our daughter back in 2010, whenever we first split up. And so this is how this all happened with the 18 months of stuff with my okay. daughter and stuff. Let me ask you a simple question. When this kid was doing all this molesting, where was he? He was with me. Okay, so he's with you. How does this wife know that he was molesting? Because she just, um, she got him for temporary, or she got him for uh, custody, you know, and we had our agreement and stuff, and then she made up the thing that he was the one doing it to her, and that's, uh, that's what, how, how did she, how did she, 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 how did she go about substantiating it? She went through DFS to do it, and DFS. How long did she have the kid? Uh, the girl go uh, to a psychiatrist. I mean, how does she substantiate it other than her saying it? They didn't. We've never had a hearing. We've never had anything. Okay. They never so, substantiated it. Okay, okay. Dude, just, just, just let's do this one at a time. I don't care about whether you had a hearing or not. I didn't ask for a hearing, did I? You, you didn't get to that point yet. I, I'm not even going to ask you about a hearing yet. I'm going to ask you simple questions. I said, so the mom is the one who said that little Johnny Asperger uh, decided to molest his sister, right? Yes. What form of molesting? There's all kinds of molesting. You get uh, you, you, just touching, just touching. Okay, so she touched the sister. Okay, whoopie do. So, did anybody ever question you uh, about this touching? No, nobody ever questioned him, and nobody, nobody ever questioned, questioned me. You. Anybody ever question you? No. Okay, nobody. So nobody's ever come to you and say, "Why does little Johnny uh, ask for a touch?" This sister. No. Nobody asked you that. Okay, great. So Mama goes and says, uh, "Little Johnny uh, Asperger's touching sister." Yeah, who cares? Okay, where is this going? Who, what, so what does it matter? What it matters is is that DFS 
uh, Children's Services uh-huh. and sent out a letter saying that all the claims were unsubstantiated because I took all the documents into them and I told them there ain't no way in hell it happened. Okay. And so then I then it actually came out that um, four months later, okay, wait, actually it came out, um, my daughter told me exactly who was doing what to her. And then I filed. Okay. Let me ask you a simple question: Why did mm-hmm. you bring? Why did you bring any paperwork to to social services, DHL people, DHS people? Why did you bring any paperwork to them at all? What did they uh, say that they were going to summon you to court? I mean, why did you talk to them? How did How did you even know that they were investigating? The um, the guardian ad litem, which is the attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, know they, they, yeah okay. Um, he actually told me that DFS is saying that something happened between um, the 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 son, your son, and your daughter, and you need to figure out what's going on. Okay. Did you say to, uh, to this DSS lady? How did this? How did this guardian line even get involved? See, so you told him bypass. How did how did this oh. kid even get the guardian line? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, what happened was the school stole my kids and everything, and I filed, as well as the administrative hearing, I also filed a, um, which was supposed to be a contempt order, but it ended up getting filed as a motion to modify our custody agreement um, against uh, my ex-wife, and then they appointed the GAL in the case. Okay, Okay. what I'm saying is, when did they do the, see, you missed this modification too. Who initiated this modification? I did. Why did you initiate a modification? Because she, uh, with the school's help, stole my kids. But the school's help did what? Stole, stole my property, stole the kids from okay. me. Okay, how did they, okay, wait a second. Well, first you moved to Lebanon, a county that you successfully won a lawsuit against. Okay, that I got. Mm-hmm. Some somebody said that uh, the director said to show us proof that the kid really lives here in this county, right? Something like the one along that path. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you sent them proof. Okay, how in the world did you go from that to uh, having the kid stolen? You missed something along the line there. No, we had a well, like I said, we had an IEP meeting. And right. they said, we are changing your custody agreement, and you are no longer going to have your children from Sunday to Friday. You're only going to have them every other week. Okay. You're only going to have them every other week on, like, on the weekends or something? Um, well, it was, I, it was, they made it up that I would have them one week, she would have them the other week. All the five days a week? Right, right. Okay, so full five days a week, 50-50. Right. You should have half the time, you'd have half the time. They split the babies in half. That's great. Okay. Right. And which, like I told them, that they couldn't do that. And then they, whenever I went to go pick up my kids at school, they called the cops on me and said, you can't have your kids. Okay. And, and who, why, why did, why did the, okay. Who wished for the, who, okay, who wished for the modification of 50-50? Who wanted the 50-50? It was um, it was the school and my ex-wife. They wanted okay. it that way. There you go, the ex-wife. There you go. You see, you forgot to say that. See, you're missing all these nice little details. First, you're saying it's just some director who did all this and said, sue us. But now you're telling me, well, the ex-wife, she wanted it as well. She wanted it to be 50-50. So you're well, gonna... I, I don't know that 100%. I mean, I would assume that she would have been the one to tell this director, hey, I want my kids more than what I have them. Do something about it. Right. You know. Okay. So she did. So she, so she went to the director. Let's just say she did. Okay. She went to the director and said, I want this more. I, I want a 50-50. Uh, I, you know, I'm tired of fan child support. I want to say I want 50-50. Right. So how much was she paying in child support? She wasn't. I never asked for child support. Okay. So she wasn't paying child support. So no. she just said she wanted to be more of a children's life, so she wanted the kids 50-50. Okay, that's fine. So, the, so she wanted a 50-50. Okay, so 
Her and the director said we're going to modify custody. Right. And, right. And and did, where did, did did you ever ask the the lady where does she have the legal authority to modify a consent decree or you know that was generated by a court? Yeah, I, I did, and I I asked her. I said, "What do you have the power to do this?" Do you, do you do you have the court order? Yes. Okay, and what does the court order read? The court order read that if the mother did not move to Lebanon prior to the commencement of school, she only got the kids on Friday after school until Sunday uh, at 6 p.m. Okay, so that's what the consent decree read. And what what is that actual document called? Is it a consent decree? What is it called? Parenting plan. Parenting plan, lovely. So it's not part of the actual divorce itself. It's an actual separate document. Yes, it is a separate document. There you go, lovely, because a lot of people who call me up don't realize there's a difference, and there definitely is a difference. So this is a parenting plan. And where along in that parenting plan in the state of Missouri, does the parenting plan, because you signed to it, you're a signatory, you submitted to the control of the jurisdiction, any authority of parenting plans, have you done any research whatsoever to say that by signing this parenting plan that any government agent, director, school teacher, and then can modify this plan at will? No. Okay. No, there's, what, there's not and, anything that I've found that says that. Okay, yes or no. That's all I need is yes or no. Okay, no. You, you, you haven't found that anywhere. Did you just ask the director a very simple question? By what authority, legal or lawful authority, are you relying upon to make such a decision? And I did. Did you tell her, can you cite the code? Can you can you actually give me the conclusions of law and what you're relying upon to do such an act? Can you you have you say, ma'am, you have a legal apartment. Can you have your legal apartment tender the actual an actual document that gives you the jurisdiction and the authority to do such an act? The only thing she told me in that meeting after I told her that she doesn't have this authority to do that. You might have she said that. It, how does she know? You, how do you know she doesn't? Uh, there's, there's nothing saying that she does that I found. You ask them to put it in writing. You say to her, you have a legal department, right, ma'am? She says, we certainly do. Say, good. Who is in charge of your legal department? Who may I get in touch you with in your legal department who will give me the law in which you're relying upon to do such an act? Who is the man or woman in your legal apartment in which I'm in contact? Right. And and she she told me then, she said, my lawyer said I can do this, and that's what we're going to do. What is my name? Of, what is the name of her lawyer? Right. And, and what was the name of her lawyer? Ernie Jacobs. Okay, so you wrote to Ernie Jacobs and say, what law is she relying upon which gives her the capacity to act in such a manner? And what right. I didn't, right, I didn't actually write a letter to him. Oh, you, you didn't do it. Oh, boy, isn't that sweet. Why didn't you write him a letter? Uh, because I just filed a complaint in their administrative and thing. Like I said, I didn't know what else to do. How about instead of complaining, how about we find out the law? Okay, you right. ask what law are you relying upon to do such an act? Where is it? written within your code, your statute, in which I subscribed, which I became a slave to, because I voluntarily put my name to paper, and I said, I will kiss your ever-loving ass, but show me in that book that I said, I will kiss your ass, and that you can modify it at will. Show me, and I will kiss your ass, because I'm a, sh a schmuck, and I just kiss everybody's ass. I will kiss your right. ass if you show me where I have to kiss your ass. Right. And, That's all and you that Right. And and yeah, that the the only problem is that I've that I've ran into is that it's no longer just the school. It's the Division of Family Services has gotten involved now. Okay. And 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 they you don't care about the Division of Family Services. You just want to know where the director had the authority, the power, the capacity to do such an act at on on Tuesday, August the seventeenth. Uh, 2014, when she told right. me that. We had, that's all you want to know. That's all you want to know to this point. I don't give a damn how many other people got involved. 
All I want to know is when that lady opened her mouth and she made that decision that day, what law was she relying upon to do such an act? Okay. All right. That's all you want to know. I, I will do that. How many other people came and filed after that? All I want to know is what happened, what, what did she do on that day? Because if she acted on her scope and authority, you got a claim. If you don't, if she, if she didn't act out of her scope and authority, you don't have a claim. Right, right. And, and I understand that. And what has happened since then is I have completely lost all rights to my kids. I don't give a damn. And, what? You've got to find out where she's got that capacity to move in such a manner. That's the first thing you got to do. Okay. All right. And you find out from her lawyer that she did have that ability or didn't have that ability to say, well, you know what, we're, that was then, this is now. You know, you got a lot bigger fish to fry. Now, uh, if I was you, I'd worry about kissing ass and uh, just getting back to the custody of your kids. You know, I don't want to be worried about what she did back then. You know, if I was you, I wouldn't want to fucking piss the judge off. And, and you know, if I was you, I'd just uh, start worrying about getting back to, you know, good graces with uh, the court. You want to know exactly what gave her the ability and power to modify custody at that day. That's okay. what you need to do. Okay. That's, that's, that's the number one thing you need to do. Okay. So okay. Then what's, what's the other thing you were trying to say to me? Well, the other thing is, is that... Go ahead. You say all kinds of other fucking uh, fun and shit happened since then? Yeah, yeah. Um, what has happened since that day is um, they they took the uh, DFS took um, the ridiculous charge that my ex-wife, um, the alleged charge that my ex-wife made against my son, and did use that to um, when we got to court. They told the judge, hey, look, we think this happened. Well, the judge said, well, it's obvious that this happened, so uh, we're going to uh, and keep in mind there was no hearing, no nothing. The judge just said this in open court. We're going to split the kids now yeah. during uh, my custody time and all that stuff. And um, DFS gets to direct wherever the kids go and what they do. Okay. And then, um, then a, a month later, they uh, DFS called up and called the judge and said he's not cooperating with us. So now we want to take his rights away to weekends only. And you know, my my old attorney and everybody was standing in court and they said, "What is he not cooperating with?" And they said, "Well, we don't know." Yeah. And so which. We found secret emails and stuff like that to the judge uh, of what was what they thought was going on and what they thought should be done. And then after, a month after that, um, they I got a call on October 31st from my old attorney, and he said that DFS said that um, they they had a uh, he told me that they had a conference call with the judge. And the judge, uh, DFS, told the judge that they, um, because I took my daughter to the emergency room because she had a huge bruise on her arm, that um, it was emotionally traumatizing for my daughter and they need to strip my rights completely and I need supervised visitation. And I only get to have them, I only get to see them at the DFS office one hour a week, um, and that has been going on since last year. Wow. That's pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing is they, they've made this web so ridiculously big, and Division of Family Services has found a way to get in. Um, I mean, the Attorney General even filed uh, this this year in February or March of this year, um, which I was recording all of the meetings and stuff like that, and I told them that I was recording the meetings and stuff, and I asked them, I said, why do I have supervised visits? And they said, well, because you can't get along with the boyfriend, which oh. that wasn't the exact words. I was just paraphrasing what they actually said. Um, but like I said, I've got it all on recording and everything. And so the Attorney General of Missouri filed a paper in my case um, that told them that said to the judge that DFS did not get due process in this matter, and the order is void uh, from from doing any of this. And 
so I told this judge, this is the fourth judge that I've had because um, I got the one to recuse himself, or I got three to recuse themselves, and um, I also got a GAL thrown out because he was illegal. He didn't have the proper paperwork on file. But, um, so, everywhere. What was that? Well, I said you're just making friends everywhere. Okay, that's fine. I just see the yeah. smell. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. And, and, yeah, I mean, the GAL's wife worked at the school district in the special education department as well. Okay. And they didn't tell me that. But, anyway, the um, the thing is that uh, the DFS sent in a motion and said, hey, look, we want out of this case. We want nothing to do with this stuff. And we didn't make any recommendations now, and we're not, we didn't make any recommendations then, and we want out of this case. And I told the judge, no. Who said that? Who, who said they wanted out? Uh, the Division of Family Services, uh, the Attorney General of Missouri, which represents the Division of Family Services. Okay, so they said they want out. Right, because I, I made everything public in my case of what they did and, and all of that, because I didn't know what else to do. Right. So I made it all public. Yeah, I that's wrong. Okay, so that's fine. They did everything public. Yeah. That's good. So they they filed this paper, and in open court, I told this new judge, I said, look, I said, DFS is saying they want out of this case, that this, con this order is void because they didn't get due process. I'm telling you, I didn't get due process, so I think the order is void. You know, I, I believe it's void. And, you know, because I fired my, my old attorney, um, and I represented myself. Well, I fired him when he sent me a text message that the judge refers in clients. And I was like, okay, you're out of here. I'm done. <laughs> and uh, so whenever I told this judge, you know, hey, look, this is the deal. You know, they, they're saying they don't want them to do with this. I'm saying I didn't get due process, so the order needs to be voided. And he said, well, he said, you need to get an attorney so... I, so we can go in the back room here and, and move this case forward and all this stuff. And I was like, well, I've tried that before, and I'm where I'm at today because of that. And he was like, he was like, well, then, you know, I, I might just refer this case to juvie, to juvenile, which is another part of the court, you know, if you don't get a lawyer and all this stuff. So I was like, all right, fine. So I went and hired a lawyer. You know, I, I said, you know, I was like, I, I have the right to represent myself. And he was like, yes, you do. But this would move. I'm going to tell you one more time. He told me like 15 times. You know, he said, it, it's, it's, you need to get a lawyer. Otherwise, it's going to get real ugly. Yeah. For me. And, you know, like I told him, I said, you know, um, he was like, I want to move forward. I was like, I do too. But the only way to move forward is to stop violating my rights. And I yeah. said, and then we can move forward. Okay. And then he threatened me that he was going to send it to juvenile and all this stuff. So I was like, all right, fine. So I went and hired another attorney Okay. And in June of this year. And um, she took $3,800 of my money. And I still <laughs> have no hope of getting my kids. <laughs> too funny. What's that? That's too funny. How did you hear about me? I, doing all the research and stuff, trying to find a way to go about this that will actually work. And so, so I fired her, and which was just um, last yeah, week or the week so before. How did my name pop up that it's going to work? What's that's that? What I'm that's why I just laughed. It's not a bad thing. I'm just laughing. And, and how does my way work? I mean, how, who told you that my way works? It, it makes sense. I mean, now that I've actually looked at your stuff and I've listened to a lot of things on, you know, how you talk to those other families and stuff, it just but makes sense. Find, I mean, how did you find me? I mean, this this talk show is like a little bullshit in the middle of nowhere Pittsburgh thing. How did you find me? One of the ladies that, um, whenever I went public, there is um, a group of people that's been helping me trying to research laws, um, and my mom actually found you as she was researching stuff, and yeah. she was like, listen to this guy. What he's saying is making sense. Yeah, and, and yeah. Yeah, it's called lens sense. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah. and, you know, honestly, you sound just like my grandfather and my father do. 
you know, they are straight, this is the way it is, you, I'm a man, you know, uh, this is the deal. My grandfather was from New York, and he, he was born and raised in New York, and, uh, you know, so he was always that, look, if you, if you got a problem with me, that's perfectly fine. Let's let's figure this out, okay? If you don't want to figure it out, fine. We'll go to court and we'll deal with it that way, you know. And sometimes he did it that way. Sometimes he was just like, you know, hey, look, I, I'll just knock you like that. I really don't care, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it, it was it, – it just made sense. And, you know, I started thinking about everything that my grandfather had told me about the way the world works and all of that and what my father had told me. And I was like, you know what? This guy's making sense. It's, it's I've heard this before, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, wow, this stuff actually works. Okay, uh, everybody wasn't full of shit. Okay, all right, this stuff actually works. So yeah. that's why I'm here with you right now. Is I I just need so I filed a claim. Okay. Well, how, how, what was the what did the claim read? The claim reads. Um, hold on, just a second. I got it pulled up here. It reads, I a man prosecutor, uh, and then down below that it says Ralph Jaynes, a man, and Ralph Jaynes, a person, magistrate, judge, Cumberland County uh, Court, and then it says a and Andrew White, a man, and Andrew White, guardian ad litem, and Missouri Department of Social Services, Children's Division. Each unnamed wrongdoer, 1 through 99, and each unnamed wrongdoer, 1 through 99, wrongdoers. Okay. And then it says under that, it says, I require a court of record trial by jury. And it, under that, I put claim trespass. And then under that, I put, I, a man, require the immediate restoration of my property, see Exhibit A and Exhibit B, to be delivered to 335 Smith Road, Lebanon, Missouri. Yeah. And then under that, I said, the said wrongdoers trespass upon my property. The trespass did and does harm and injure and injury to my property. The commencement of the wrong and harm began on May 18, 2013. The wrong and harm continues to this day, November 24, 2014. I require compensation for the initial and continual trespass upon my property. Compensation due... Uh, and I took your uh, $1 per second that they interfered, and it ended up being 90 uh, per, 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 you know, per exhibit, and ended up being $95,904,000. And then under that, I put uh, continual trespass compensation due, $1 per second, exhibit A, $1 per second, exhibit B. And then under that, I say, I said, I say here, and will verify in open court that all herein be true. And then I signed it, Dennis Lagares Jr., and they put the date underneath it and put my thumbprint on it. And then I also attached Exhibit A, a picture of my son, and Exhibit B, a picture of my daughter. Yeah. Okay. You went you went an awful long way to do something that I think is incredibly simple. But uh, is there who who? When when you got this new parenting plan, right? Way back when, right? Yeah. Okay. When mm -hmm. when, you, when you got this new parenting plan, so you, you're trying to say that you had some sort of a uh, hearing. Way back no. when. No, I never had a hearing. It never went. I filed for due process in the administrative um, hearing panel for um, the school. But I never went through with it because then they got DFS involved, and you know, it, it, it took them a year. And I had this all spelled out in the the complaint of what they were trying to do and how they were trying to strip me of my rights. Because okay. my ex wife said, "Let me you, you do an awful long way of asking these. I ask a simple question. You mm -hmm. go around the long path. You just like doing the long way for some reason." But a uh, very simple question I just asked you. I said, so who modified this this arrangement? Who modified this parenting plan? Uh, originally, Tammy Lopardis at the school. Okay, Tammy did. Okay, so some of you, this director lady named Tammy, she modified it? Yes, originally, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, she modified it, right? Yes. 
and she made it 50-50. Did you just ever send her a bill because she modified something? By this modification, it has caused uh, loss to you. you. You've accrued financial loss. Have you ever just sent her a bill and say, you owe me this much money? No. Okay. And like I said, is there a reason why you still can't go back to their attorney and say by what lawful or legal authority was she relying upon to do such an act? You see, you got to do that still, too. Right, right. Or well, you send her the bill that, hey, you know what? I did I did set myself up when I signed this parenting uh, consent decree back in uh, 2012. I did set myself up for this, that somebody could just come in and just, you know, do as they will, and I have to basically consent to it. So, like I said, right. first to find out, did you consent to this? You know, did you give them the legal and lawful authority to do such an act to you? No. And, and, well, you're going to find out. Oh, okay. You, you might have. There might be something in that contract that you signed. Like I said, people just sign things like effing crazy, and they never bother to really read it. That gives them the, the other person the power of authority to act in a certain manner. No, no, uh, they they didn't create a new document. And to say they created a new document, whatever you signed in 2012, the parenting plan you, after the divorce, right? You got the right. divorce decree, right? Okay, you filed the divorce decree. You got divorced. Then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you got started to um, you, you had a parenting plan also established at that time, right? Right. Great, lovely. So you're following along with me. Is there anything in that parenting plan that, that back from 2012 that gives them the authority to do what they did? No. I How went over that thing a hundred times, and exactly. there's nothing in there. All right. You believe there's nothing in there. That's that's lovely. That's a nice belief to have. So, um, so you believe that what they're doing right now is wrong? Right. Okay, that they're, they're doing something that they know is illegal and unlawful. They have no capacity to do such an act, and they're just totally bullshit. Yes. Okay, so you think what they're doing is wrong. So you're going to have to, you're calling them out, basically saying, good. Now, where's your attorney? And I want to hear the attorney tell me that what you're doing is legal and lawful. Right? Okay. That right now. you you got to find out that what they're doing is legal and lawful. And if you find out that what she she wasn't doing something legal and lawful, obviously you could tend to her the bill. Okay. For, for what she the damage that she's done. Okay. And when you do that, they've got something called a a finance department in every county and every state. In every finance department, there's something called risk management. They're the people okay. that actually the actuaries that actually come up who have to. When, when a state or a county employee does wrong, they have a fund, like a trust fund or a slush fund or a, uh, a compensation fund for, for the wrong. So obviously you're going to get them, they're going to be involved because you okay. want compensation. So you're going to, obviously those people are going to get involved. So uh, okay. then you go up to the lady in her uh, individual and her official capacity. Because in official capacity, that's when you could tap into the state's finances. You know, okay. That's right. But, of course, right now, even if you did go after her, she could say she's worth $32.16, and you get a million dollars from her, she could say, please take my payment of one penny a year for the next 10 million years. And that's all right. I'm going to get. So that's why you got to go after her in the official and individual capacity. As a, okay. a state employee as well as a woman. Okay. You can't, you can't forget to go after them in their official capacity as well. That she, right. was in she was in dereliction of duty because she overstepped. She overreached her, you know, capacity, you know, and her ability to, to administrate, what to do what she did. Right. Okay. That's why you got to make sure you get to come after her both ways. Okay. So, um, and then, like I say to people, that is when you file, like, a, a complaint, and the other one is when you file a claim. So you're actually doing both worlds. You're going after man-to-man, -man, which is the claim world, and then you're actually filing a complaint, which is the legalese world. So people say to me, but, Carl, why do you file complaints and claims? I said, it depends. Am I going after the person, or am I going after the man? Or am I going after both? 
Sometimes it's okay. beneficial to go after both. And I'm sure you've seen that sometimes in lawsuits, too. If you've been really studying lawsuits, you've been seeing where it says uh, in an individual and official capacity. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's... Uh, I actually filed a federal lawsuit against all of these um, people. Well, if you didn't file a federal lawsuit, you probably filed the United States Civil Court under the United States Civil Procedures. Right, yeah. I, I dismissed it because I realized that that was not the way I needed to go, so I dismissed it without prejudice. Right, it could be the way to go because you can sue them in the federal court because you want the diversity. You want to say that... I'm not going to be able to get a, because honestly, if you read the Constitution of the United States, it says any time a man has a charge against him by the state in which he lives, the court of original jurisdiction is that of the United States Supreme Court. You can't be tried in the state of Missouri by the state of Missouri. Okay. All right. You, and that's... It's right there in the Constitution. If you read, uh, you know, if you read the, the, like the power of the Supreme Court, any man who's been charged with a crime in his state Obviously, the state court cannot hear the matter. Obviously, right. the original jurisdiction has got to be that of the United States Supreme Court. The only so problem I have with that, everybody was charged with the state court, if everybody was charged with the state court, ran to the United States Supreme Court, they'd be logged, backlogged forever. Okay, I have a question about that. I was never actually charged with anything. I'll be saying that you were charged with anything. I'm saying that you okay. signed a parental consent decree in 2012 that you bound yourself to act in a certain manner and, and you're going to let a certain jurisdiction, a certain parties and certain individuals outside of your, you know, uh, outside of your home determine where your children are going to lie. Right. Okay. All you, right. You allow that to happen. So like I said, you've got to let them show you where is, where is the provision in here which allows you to come in and administrate my property. Where, 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 where is it say it's here in this, this this parenting plan. Where does it say that I, I give you the capacity to m m do such an act? And they've right. got to point out. They got to say, well, in section three, subsection F, you know, subsection G, it's clearly defines that we have the capacity at will, at any time, any, you know, uh, uh, state agent has the capacity to modify your parenting without your consent, with you know, without your uh, without your permission. Okay. I'm going to have to actually point it out and show you. In black and white, mm -hmm. it says, hey, buddy, it says right here. What part of that can't you read? And I'll say, oh, yes, I'll say that. I did. I was a sucker for that. I did sign that bullshit, didn't I? Yeah, I guess I am. Okay. And then you live and learn. And you say, you know what? I'm going to fucking uh, have to, you know, rescind my, my signature on that. You know what? I I'll administrate my property from now on. Thank you anyway. Okay. So, so I need but, to rescind that parenting agreement? No, because first you got to find out. No, first you're going to hold them if they if they exceeded their lawful and legal authority to act in such a manner. Then you're going to go after them for breach. Then you're going to for they you know they um, breach they they you know they they moved without um, the capacity to do such an act. You know it's a derelict in duty. 